you and a friend buy a DDR5 RAM kit. You take one stick, he takes one stick, and then when prices settle, you buy another kit to get the full amount. That's an idea I heard the other day, and a few weeks ago, I'd have called you absolutely crazy, but with the rate of RAM prices going up, I think we should probably test whether it's sensible or not. So we're going to create a quick test system. The CPU I'm going to use is the Ryzen 5 7500F. Now you might be wondering why not use 7800X3D or 9800X3D for a bolder CPU result. Well those X3D chips in some games they don't care too much about the RAM performance so I thought I'd get one of the CPUs that doesn't have a 3D cache to see if we can get a worst case scenario with the RAM difference. If I owned a Ryzen 7 9700X that might be a better choice but I don't stock them because I feel they're a completely pointless CPU for most people. And now in goes the precious cargo. And to stress the CPU out, you need a powerful GPU. We've got the RTX 5080 MSI Inspire, so let's plug it in. And here it is, our medium ugly PC belt. So we've got our BIOS updated, and you can see we have one RAM stick in situ. And then we just want to go into Precision Boost Overdrive and ensure that it's enabled. We'll put the limits to motherboard as well. We'll leave the rest. Okay, and there we go. We are running 16 gigabytes at 6,000 megahertz CL30. So let's get into some testing. These are the settings we're going to use in Fortnite. 1080p full screen, DirectX 12. Everything is on low, but with epic draw distance with a normal 100% 3D resolution, so let's hop into a game. Okay, this is Battlefield 6, 1080p, low settings, and there's no upscaling at all, so that's just to see how we get on. Apex Legends 1080p high, even though it's on high, it is still going to be rinsing that CPU. I suppose I could turn it all down to low, I expect the difference will be academic. And just for a AAA game benchmark, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 on the screen there with a built-in benchmark, ray tracing, medium. If I know YouTube comment sections, and trust me, I don't want to, I know you're going to complain that I haven't used a high-end X3D CPU to test this out. So fine, I'll do it, but I'm not going to subject you to watching a load of game footage again. I'm just going to put it in the chart at the end. Happy now? So here's the consolidated chart with all the results. As you can see, I've added the 9800X3D alongside. Actually, I was quite surprised here. Really, the only game that was held back was Battlefield 6. Being at 1080p resolution, I doubt it was a capacity issue. So therefore, I think the dual channelness definitely helps in Battlefield 6. And while I was testing it out, the gaming experience was far superior on the two sticks. But I will say, in most of the other games that I tested, they felt basically the same. I couldn't tell the difference. And that was exemplified when we went to the 9800X3D CPU because I couldn't tell the difference between any of the games that we were playing. They all felt really smooth. Maybe if you're an eSports pro and you're really sensitive to tiny latency changes, maybe that's going to be annoying for you. But I'm just a normal guy and it felt fine to me. As you can see also on the page, we've got our test system spec and some of the settings and then some conclusions. And like we said, Battlefield 6, big improvement, but the others felt the same. And the 9800X3D completely negated all of those issues. All right, so splitting RAM kits, genius money saver or just a bad idea? I think the results speak for themselves. If you don't mind doing this, it can be a really good way to see out the RAM apocalypse. I suppose my question would be, how long are you willing to have that in your system for? Because there might be other reasons you need 32 gigs. I can't see this RAM thing going away for another year or so. So it's up to you to make that value choice. Do I want to spend that extra money? Or do I just want to try and save a bit of money and put up with having less RAM? In most games, it didn't actually make a huge difference, as you can see, particularly in a lot of the popular titles that are played nowadays. So it's going to be an individual decision. 
That's why I just give you the data in the chart and let you make the choice. And if you like that approach to PC tech and testing, you should subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on for more videos like this.